You live in a sort of similar area to where Jared Amara lives in the same constituency. Uh, yeah. Um, how did you meet him? Uh, I met him on a dating app in September 2016, a dating app called Happen. We were talking for a while, we talked on the phone. I had friends that sort of knew him from around the Sheffield music scene. So I, like, I met up with him once. It was clear we didn't really click, it wasn't really for me. And then that was it, there were no hard feelings. I but saw the, him from time so to time. So what was he like on that date? How did he behave? On, on the um, date? He was alright. He was quite... Um, he never really stopped talking. I couldn't really get a word in edgeways. Um, but there was nothing... You didn't there feel was nothing, He no, didn't say or do anything? No, there was nothing... There was nothing, nothing to complain of. about? Just a date that No, didn't, didn't just a date that kind of, yeah, just wasn't really for me, so... So flash forward to the next time you see him, and then this is where it, you say it goes all badly wrong. What happened? Uh, yeah, it was um, March this year in the club that he DJs at in Sheffield Town Centre. And just quickly, how long had it been since you'd been on the date? Uh, so, roughly, roughly? the date was like in September, so I oh, saw him in March. About so, half a year. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's six months before. How long we, was he saying these, these things, which um, is just we simply can't repeat at this time of day? Uh, it was literally about 30 seconds, just as. It was about two sentences. And were you shocked? Uh, yeah, because I hadn't kind of. I wasn't really expecting it. And because we, we were talking on such a level and we were like, fine, talking calmly, and then he just seemed to flip. Right. And had drink been taken? Um, by me, yeah. Um, we were on a staff night out, so obviously, yeah. Uh, by me, his, yeah. But what I'm about not his sure. demeanour? Was did you think he'd been he'd been drinking? Um, I didn't. I wouldn't say you he was know, drunk. Okay. But no. yeah, no, I wouldn't have said he was drunk. No. And just to be, you know, you don't want to say the exact words that he <laughs> used, but the tenor of it was what it was. Um, it was misogynistic, it was transphobic, and it what was angry. What does transphobic mean? And aggressive. I've not really heard that phrase. Um, like, I think a transphobic slur is um, just a, a bad thing to say about someone who, a trans person, basically, like a trans. Right. Yeah, like okay. someone who is trans. But uh, I, I suppose if you were to clean it up, uh, you could say that he, it, in, and condense it, he, he wouldn't touch you with a barge pole. That, uh, that kind of approach. Yeah, but far less intelligent yes. than that. Yes. Right. And let's just tell you what Jared O'Mara says, because obviously, just to be clear, you'd, you'd, this isn't, you haven't come out now having no. heard about what happened online. No. You'd been tweeting about this, hadn't you? Yeah. Uh, and so it'd been picked up yep. in the public domain in June, I think, when you yep. realised he'd become been, a candidate. Yep. So then you, I think you were, did you say you were surprised by the fact that he'd become a candidate having yeah, had your yeah. alleged experience? Okay. So Jared O'Mara um, says in a statement that, uh, the Sophie Evans allegation made against me is categorically untrue. Speaking of the previous allegations, he said, overwhelmingly people accepted my apology, accepted my sincerity and remorse. They have accepted that I've been through a journey of education. I've stood down from the Women and Equality Select Committee too. I think it's the right thing to do. I don't think I can continue on that committee when I feel so deeply ashamed of the man I was. So he's calling you a liar? Yeah, he's been calling me a liar since June, so it doesn't surprise me at all. Why did you decide to go public with it? Why did you decide to initially to tweet and now to do an interview like this? What, what's, what's, if you like, what's in it for you? That's what people will be asking at home. Um, I just wanted people to know. I just wanted people to know what he's like. I wanted people to know, um, you know, this is the man that's representing you. So when he says he's been on a journey and he's changed and he's no longer the kind of foul-mouthed person that he was 15 years ago, you would say what? I find that very hard. To believe, mm. I As, find it very hard and to believe. You are that most important of people, far more important than the commentators we had here ten minutes ago. Much more important than, than any of us here, because you're, a consti you're his constituent. Yes. You're the voter. Uh, what do you think he should now do? Um, I initially I wanted him to apologise. I wanted him to apologise to me. I wanted him to apologise to my colleagues that were involved in the other incident that night that was like sort of linked to this one. Um, now, for me, it's too late for him to apologise for that. I want him to apologise for calling us liars and I want him to admit what he's done. And do you think the party should suspend him whilst they investigate what you've, um, what you've said he did? Absolutely. They've ignored what we've been saying for four months. It's been on Twitter, when my colleague's been on the radio. When you say we, what do you mean we? Uh, me and um, a colleague of mine who were also... Mm. Um, who, who heard what in, he said? Uh, I don't think she heard what he said. She was involved in a separate incident with him and she has her own um, separate So, so she's been making complaints against him. him as well? Yeah, she's written blog posts and um, was on the radio as well and about And is her it, allegation so. similar to yours? 
Um, it's a similar allegation of misogyny, yes. 